A Rick Convenient Mort, based on the movie A Rick Con- uh, Wait, An Inconvenient Truth, which is an Al Gore environmental documentary. Did you know? I did not. Well, there you go. But did you know that uh, Planet Teen is based off Captain Planet? I did hear that little fact of that 1990s, 1990s cartoon. Yeah. Did you watch I that? I watched that shit growing up. Did yeah, you? I, did. I grew up watching that, yeah. Oh, there you go. I never, I just found out. I didn't. Captain Planet, he's a hero. Does something, something down to zero. Oh my God, you remember the theme? Well, most of it. So, you, they're trying to sell some merch here, clearly. Like in real life, which I want to shout out. I got some. Wait, you got some? Yeah, I got Hell some, man. yeah, boy. Hell some, yeah. Baby. You got some. You got some. If I'm not wearing Jungle Beats, I'll wear this. Bro. So, amazing t shirts. But let's get into the episode. You tell me, told me you didn't love this episode. No, I wasn't huge on it. I, I actually didn't. I enjoyed the characters. I I just didn't enjoy the pacing of the episode. The, the dialogue pacing. was by the pacing. So the way the way things moved, I felt too quickly for what they were trying to convey. Okay. And I felt like a lot of the decision making as well with some of the things in this episode was questionable. Okay. Would well, you want to you want to mention that as we go? Exactly. As we go. Anything so far? No. So far, it's fine. It's so early into the episode; it's still setting it up. Okay. Cool. Well. Again, Morty is introduced to a female character he kind of falls in love with. Mm-hmm. It's a consistent theme throughout this season is that Morty and women mm-hmm. are the... His demise. He's growing up. He's growing up. I remember when I started thinking about women, it was the only thing I thought about for a long time. And now? Well, now I think about other things. <laughs> <laughs> It's like that part of your brain during oh, puberty yeah. is just like half of your brain. It's it's true, man. Like the amount of shit that I didn't want to do or didn't do just purely because I was horny. Too much, man. Too much. Actually, it, this is a re- this character is a reference from last episode, isn't it? I don't think this character was in the episode before, was it? Oh, my fault. Because I thought that would happen later. Anyway. No, I thought... No, she happens in this episode, I'm pretty sure. All right. So there's this... They position like they've probably take. They've never taken a stance on like envi- the environment so far in Rick yeah. and Morty, like a moral stance or like a the questioning the topic. Hmm. And Planetina's position... Oh, and you know the voice? You know, you know the voice? Who did the voice yeah, on? Yeah, Alison Brie. Yeah, so this is the second community person, else. community cast member... To She's voice, do voice. I also over. love, and you can see the chemistry. Like straight away, you can tell they're both interested in each other. Yeah, they do it pretty genuinely. Like you can tell. But it's also pretty funny because she's meant to be like two thousand years old, but she still acts like she's seventeen, like a two thousand year old attracted to like a fourteen year old boy. Oh, that, that's fucked up. That's that's his mother's point, right? Pro- yeah. She's been, but for once, um, on. she's being protective. If people are going to get angry at the fourth episode, how are they not angry at this one? It's kind of the same thing. Well, how's it the same? Oh, with this part? No, with, with the how, orgies? Like, with how like a woman that's thousands of year olds is attracted to a 14-year-old boy. Ah, okay. So you play on like... Yeah. It's on like that. If that's on that. It's like, you know, there's similar sort of things that people should be angry about. Interesting. Interesting. I, d- I don't think people... Like there's levels. And I don't think people... Like in the way it's delivered, I think is a bit differently. I don't think yeah, people yeah. interpret it. Uh, yeah, but the I premise see. of what you're saying, I think, is is has some validity. Anyway. Anyway, so this is the first. So Summer and Rick have decided to do like a three three planets can destroy at the same time. It's the first time it's happened in a very long time, Rick said. And then so they're just going to, you know, they're having a no no strings attached bit of fun because they've both been through some shit. But and Rick has other ideas. This gave me a laugh. Them pretending to eat ass. <laughs> yeah, this- I liked this bit. That was good. That was the fun part. I'm trying to figure out what's the screenshot. That could be the screenshot. There's a lot of good moments. <laughs> so I think it's interesting that Summer and Rick take this nihilistic approach to showing how some people respond 
to the environment and world ending problems in the way that fuck it doesn't matter anyway let's just do drugs have orgies and enjoy our life while we're here whereas on the other side planetina and, and morty are trying to save the environment the planet but it just i think it shows a dichotomy a comparison of how people respond to world problems yes definitely i like that some people like this fuck it and some people are like, no, we should take individual responsibility and try and make an effort. Mm -hmm. Each little, you know, each little thing. They're kind of cute together, though. Yeah, so it's, uh, they might, it's, it's so not although bad. that fucking flower thing she got him was creepy as That's creepy, yeah. <laughs> Very. If you got that on your first date, you are getting the hell out of there. But it's also very Morty to like it. Of course. M Morty just wants someone to love. Morty just wants some love. And Rick's just having a good time. And Rick just wants to forget we, all of his... But we pain. all know why Rick's really there. It's those fucking shoulder titties, bro. Sorry. Those <laughs> elbow titties. Elbow, yeah. Elbow, elbow titties. <laughs> Same uh, thing, right? Like, coming up with stuff like that, it's like... I mean, yeah. Phase four superhero. Wait. So you then you realize she's just a product of like Captain Planet. Of of capitalism, of like of people trying to make money. Mm -hmm. Which is a really smart way to go about it. Because in the original Captain Planet, yeah, Captain Planet was someone when all the rings were together. So it's a, it's a play on that. It's really cool. That shows that this season, they're really using ideas from other shows to put into their shows. Yeah, you and can I, see that I, consistently. Yeah, and I don't think that's a lack of... I think it's a bad thing. I think it's a really smart thing, the way they go about it. Because all their ideas have to come from something. Yeah, and we're all standing on the shoulders of giants, right? What is there any idea unique, entirely unique? No, all our, all our ideas are, are compiled of something that already exists, I believe. I, th I think, yeah. I tend to agree with that with with majority of things, mm -hmm. unless you're a genius, genius. <laughs> Damn, a genius, 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 genius. genius. Ooh, you and you see Jerry like trying to exert some level of control over his children, but you know he has right. no hope. Yeah, it's Jerry. He'll give up eventually. He'll be too scared. And you see this conflict like authentic genuine parental child conflict like mm -hmm. almost all kids can relate to being angry at their parents storming out type thing mm -hmm. yeah i did it plenty of times more than i could count there you go so you're pretty much morty oh i don't know about that <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. So Morty's inspired by Planetina's pussy yeah. to, <laughs> to do, do some good. He knows that, she, yeah, and also he knows that she's going to enjoy it, and that'll like show that he cares about her because he cares about things that she cares about. Right, but really, he's just driven and motivated not by that actual good deed, but by. I, but I think I think he is. I think a part of him is happy to do those good deeds because Morty does have a good side to him. I just feel like she brings it out of him. Because he generally does, he generally, you know, not only wants to fuck her, but cares for her. He cares for her, but cares for the actual cause? I don't think we have evidence of that. I think he does. You think he does? You just, that, that's that's kind of like your sense of the character? Yeah, I think so. I think that that's a part of what turns him on. Like, because he hangs around Rick, who doesn't really do a lot of good. And he sees someone with the same amount of power, but is doing actual good. Right. Well, he thinks... I feel like I feel like there's some good to there. There we <laughs> The awkward ask. See, when she says she had kids here, I was kind of hoping that it was going to take a different direction. But when I found out the kids were the people that summon her, I was like, ah, this could still work. So that was the moment know. you kind of lost a bit of faith in the episode. Not lost a bit of faith, like I still had faith, but like 
it was just a moment where I was like, I think if they went with a different idea, it would have been better. Okay. So what are they on their second planet now? They're... No, this is still the first planet. And they're getting ready to leave. So there you go. The first planet's blown up. Everyone's dead, but he promised that he, uh, you know, they promised it was going to be, he picked a promise, it would just be them. But uh, Rick is kind of falling for someone. Yeah, which is interesting because uh, Rick has typically had a bit more of a detached Yeah, which shows more personality. growth for him. It shows that he's, you know, willing to be a bit more human again, a bit more growing up. <laughs> this is amazing. Holy shit, Summer's getting fucking wild. She's getting wasted, man. Oh. But if you had the power to do this... Fucking oath I would. I would love to party with aliens to get fucked up. I'd have to make sure that the things I would be inserting would be okay for my body, considering that other species are taking it. I'd want to make sure it wouldn't be able to kill me, but once I was sure, fucking oath I would party with aliens. So the whole idea of pretty much Rick being with this alien the whole episode i wasn't a huge fan of i understood that it was a part of showing a different side to rick's character but i just really didn't find it engaging because the alien character i didn't find very interesting because she kind of just kept saying hello i didn't find that funny nor interesting yeah there wasn't much depth to her or give us a yeah. reason why he liked her exactly so that was a that was a, a plot hole for me in a way like it was, it was something i didn't really find interesting like i wanted to enjoy this other character but i knew nothing about them i didn't find them funny or interesting so i didn't care but later on we do learn that she had some like magical titties that's when she got interesting and that's when i laughed but it was such a long gap till then that there was such a long period of time where i just wasn't really enjoying it and it also highlights rick is still this superficial guy who, who maybe you thought there was some depth there, but it's just a superficial... No, she's just... She's just got some great titties. I never thought about it like that. Look at this. We, we see things we see things differently, bro. No, but that's the good. You connect. Yeah, you yeah. come together and mm. you can you can interact with your ideas. Mm. So, I think... Uh, Morty is willing to kill. He's getting like... It's getting darker. Yeah, he's turning into Rick. Like he... You see Rick just kill things and not give a fuck. Yeah. Rick. Now Morty's doing the same. He's like, you know what? I love this girl. You don't want me to be with her? I have the power to be with her. So fuck it. I'll do whatever it fucking takes to be with her. Very Rick-like move. And that's what Morty goes ahead and does. He murders five... <laughs> this is probably my favorite part. Of, this is my favorite part of the episode. Which one? <laughs> When he fucking murders them all. <laughs> and then the fucking guy getting eaten by the seals, which I think is like a an ode to the, the Navy seals when they killed that guy. Oh. Uh, I can't remember which one, but they've killed many terrorists. But Yeah, but I think that's why they had the seals killing him because it's like the Navy seals. And it's also, I think, a reference to a lot of these billionaire oil billionaires. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, who own all companies like keep exotic animals. <laughs> Holy shit, Morty's going to town them. Yeah, so I kind of was annoyed because I wanted the, the the Summer and Rick adventure to be more of a connection for Summer and Rick, which there is there. But if you didn't have this alien which I didn't really care for, taking up a lot of the time, then I feel like that's time where we could have seen more Summer and Rick moments, being a bit more vulnerable with each other. Mm. So you think more time with that instead of more time? But th Yeah. It seemed like the, the this storyline here with Morty was like the A story. It was the main story. and, and This the, was the story I was more invested in. Like they've prioritized giving Morty the major story as Rick now being the side quest if you will. That's how I've felt. And this is the moment where we realize she's not, she doesn't, everything she does, because I feel like it's a big part of why Morty loved her, because she gets things done in a way which isn't very Rick-like. And this is when she does the very Rick-like thing and it turns him off straight away. He's like, oh, you're willing to kill people to get what you want. Well, that's just what, and that's exactly what Rick Morty's been doing, but he's not attracted to it. Uh, so this is the question, like, 
you first ask, like, there's a there's a moral question. Does Planet Tina have a point? You know, she makes some great points about taking individual responsibility for one's decisions to better the world. Mm-hmm. Like the batteries things. Like, that's super practical and, like, a great idea. Like, re- recycle batteries. Don't throw them in the bin. It all just comes down to what you believe, man. I believe that if, you, if you're if you forced to kill a human life in order to better the world, I don't think it's better. So right. find an alternative. And that's just something I'm always going to hopefully believe in. So I can un- Yeah, I can understand people's wanting the opposite. I get it. She goes from individual responsibility, mm-hmm. be better, to killing people and destroying infrastructure and property. Yeah. But some people actually believe this. They do, man. Many people do. Probably more than the average person. Like more than you think? Yeah, man. I feel like a lot of people in the world would be happy to end human lives in order to gain a better world. Right. And that's maybe a way to create a dramatic change. Mm -hmm. Which is probably going to be better for our world in the future. But However... We lose a bit of what makes us human. There's a cost. Life. Killing human life? It's just never destroying land and property. Hmm. I'll never believe it. I'll always think there's an alternative, and I'll happily let humanity be fucking terrible until it is. Right, because you prioritize like human life. Like human life is the most valuable thing. Like humans are the best. I believe that we can definitely achieve a way of alternatives without resorting to that. I think we have it in this. We just haven't got there yet. And I think Morty's pain reflects that. Yeah. Look at him. He sees her just like because he because he was so in love with her because because of how how much she just didn't do stuff like that. And so maybe she's like a reflection of Rick's worst parts of his character in some ways. Yeah, and maybe also a bit of himself because he's starting to turn into. Oh Rick. yeah, yeah, true, good. Because maybe because also you got to remember the people you hang out with shape you. So maybe he felt like hanging around her was helping him be a better person because he was he was recognizing that he was becoming not a, not a better person. What the hell are they playing here? Game. I don't know, but <laughs> Jerry loves it because it's dumb. <laughs> See, this here, I get it. Like, why would a mum let a fucking woman that who's like in a 17-year-old body move in with a 15-year-old son or whatever? Like, I get it. Like, I wouldn't. But it's this, like, young love, right? It's yeah. like the most important thing to you in the in the world is this in that moment. Like if I knew the history of like the, the child's family and, and then then yeah, maybe I'd let her live there, but knowing what she knew, yeah, I get it. And and so then we see this like quite, it's emotional. Like like great voice acting, like you can hear the pain, mm. right? Like, Morty genuinely seemed like, out of all the women, like, he's females and girls that he's... Yeah, uh, even Jessica. Yeah. I don't remember hearing that amount of pain. Yeah. And he storms out. And this is something that I think... I don't know, he keeps repeating. I think that many can relate to. <laughs> and the elbow titties. And then you just get the... Fl- you flip it. They flip you. Like, all, you yeah. get emotional pain and then you get, like... This is... They blur it out. Which is hilarious. <laughs> Yeah, it's so hilarious. They they definitely didn't have to blur it out, but it just makes it more funny. And this game in the middle, like this just <laughs> You're to punch his belly. And and th- this moment mm. here. And you so, can see even the even the flower thing's got a lot like frowning now. It's yeah. so sad. And the flower comes off and it looks like it's crying. Mm-hmm. Like really well done scene, I think. Because you don't see Morty's mother being, being that mother Morty. role. Yeah. Hey? So yeah. This, this is a really good scene. I like this scene a lot. Like there's development there in their connection because she typically is more distant and disconnected from her children. Yeah. I think it's a, it's a pain that many most can relate to in some way, like heartache and heartbreak. Mm. Once you realize right. who somebody is, 
and I think we'll we'll see more of Planetina hopefully because I honestly thought this episode was going to be continued because it ended so abruptly. Like I also didn't like the ending of this episode. Like I think this scene's good, but I feel like the closure of everything that had happened was done a bit too abruptly. I think I would have enjoyed a, a stronger finish. I think that I hear that similar critique of The Simpsons, um, particularly in later seasons. Uh, mm. But that's why that's why you asked me like you expected this to be a continuation in the next episode right i really did i really did but i don't remember them ever doing that have they done that before they never have but just the way this episode's done just sets it up for that which right. is why which is why by not continuing it makes it a weird end of the episode but then they always get this thing at the end where they have some space to do that right mm. potentially yeah potentially yeah Wait. Oh, this is, um... My bad. This is back to the... Here. Here's the end credits. Right? Oh, yeah, because they ended up... Because the dad and the son... There's, the, there's another incest. See? They, you're right, man. That's another but one. Why, why are people... If these people were human, would people be more angry about it? Yes. I think because it's a... It's too... It's, man. This is... When you can't relate to it, it's more of a fantasy. It's more fictional. Exactly. You can suspend disbelief, but when you so make maybe, it human... So maybe by putting this at the end of there, they were testing this sort of humor out with the audience. In order to release the next episode, they needed to be sure if it was okay. And because no one reacted to this, they thought it'd be okay. But what would they do? Not release an episode? <laughs> no, I mean, man. They've already wrote them and made them. Oh, dude, they've got episodes they would have definitely finished and not released. I, I'm pretty sure. Because they they've got to show them to other people before it's released. They need other people's opinions, like trust. I want that. I would be interested to see the process of how they how they do that. Mm. But yeah, so all in all, I thought this episode was the the weakest of the series. I don't think it was a terrible episode, but I don't think it was a very strong episode. Like I'd watch it again, but I feel like when I watch Rick and Morty, I expect near perfectness because so many of the episodes are done so well. So when there's any forms of elements that I don't agree with, it normally corrupts the rest of the whole package. Right. You mean you don't agree with? What do you mean? I mean, like most most episodes of Rick and Morty are done so well that I expect such a high execution from the episodes that when I don't enjoy little aspects of them, it sometimes reflects the rest of the episode. That's the, that's a high bar, right? They've they've really yeah. set themselves a high bar. And that's the thing with being so good at what you do, man. It's like really good people that make music, like Kanye West. If Kanye West does something average, I fucking drill yeah. him for it because I know because I know how fucking good he is, man. You're that's almost why. cursed by your brilliance. Like, if he'd never done another album and put out God is King, it's not a bad album. But the fact that I know his discography, that album is trash. Right. It's comparison. Mm -hmm. It's like you might have really great sex or really great food and you adapt to that pleasure. And if it, it might still be good, but because it's not great, the loss that you feel is like, oh, if you didn't know how great it could be, this would still be good. Does that make sense? If you don't know no, how it great does. it could be. Bro, you're a fucking prophet. You need those glasses. You need a fucking, you need a fucking, oh, those fucking hats, man. Those like, those like square ones. You know, those ones that are like that, that are like red. What? The little, the, oh, the little black tuffle coming off it. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta hook me up. Shit, man. All I know is you're a motherfucking prophet. I think we covered some good shit this episode though. I yeah, man. We, uh... And we did it much more succinctly than our previous selves. <laughs> Yes. That was good, man. Jungle Beast, babe, you got any yeah, lasting Jungle thoughts? Or are, you, are you good? No, no, I'm good. I think we covered some very good points this episode. I feel like I got across what I liked, what I didn't like, and uh, a lot of little other little aspects and attributes. So I think I spoke me mind. Rick and Morty oh, season... Sorry. <laughs> Rick and Morty season five, <laughs> so four. You guys can see there's an all podcast platforms. Um, if you guys want to stay up to date, make sure you, you you subscribe because that YouTube algorithm will not tell you uh, all the channels that you want to see. It's dirty like that. Yeah, dirty. It's a, it's a cold world out there. Sometimes life be a bitch. Other than that, man, you guys, I'm Alexander Emanuel Sandalis. I'm Thade Gray. Did I used to say my name with something random every time? You said at the start. When we do our reviews. Tarot. Man, I should start doing that again. That yeah, do fun. it. Next time. That's fucking Melanthi to Nano. Yeah, exactly. Business like that. Business like that. All right. Fuck yeah. Dude, we fucking pump those out. Look at this. We're just pumping and dumping. Pumping. Pumping. We know what happens dumping. when you pump. Season four is what happened. Season, episode four is what happened when you pump. 
I'm glad that you enjoyed it and can look past the yeah the thing that people are angry about. Uh, I feel like the, the thing that people are angry about is just it's a bit it's a bit particular and picky. I, I feel. I don't remember really feeling offended by no. entertainment, music, movies, TV shows. I don't even remember. When do I feel offended? I, I didn't feel offended at all. No, but in my life, in your life. Oh, in life? Yeah. Like, bro, I'm, I'm the chillest motherfucker. Yeah, it's life. very rare. I, I feel that. I don't get offended. Because I feel like it also helps when you know people. The more you know somebody, the more that when they might do something or say something which might be, you know, not seen as something good. If you know if you know someone, then you can understand when they're joking more often. Intent. Intent, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, we're done, guys. See you uh, later. Get up out of here. Yeah, if I can get some vitamin C into you, do some star jumps. Uh, don't go to the zoo on a Tuesday. No, unless, that's the worst day. Unless you're bringing some food with you. That's what's don't up. Tell, but don't tell the people that work there. That's what's up. All right. See you.